casting TC284 Variable Density Flexible Foam. In this tutorial, we're going to pour up a prop wrench using some of the TC284 Flexible Foam cast in the 8-pound density. We'll be pouring the foam into a 5140 Platinum Silicone Mold that we made in a previous tutorial. And then we'll also be covering some quick finishing techniques for the final cast wrench prop. Now TC284 is a flexible self-skinning foam that can be used for padding applications and prototypes, but in this instance we'll be using it to cast a realistic foam pipe wrench weapon prop. Now to begin we're going to be brushing some of the blue steel pigment powder into the 5140 silicone mold. Now this is a translucent colorless mold, so it's kind of hard to see here, but uh, what I'm doing is just brushing a thin layer of that pigment powder into some key areas of that pipe wrench mold. And the silicone will grab that pigment powder and hold it in place until we cast our foam behind it. So we'll be using the adhesive potential of the TC284 foam. Remember, flexible foams, polyurethane foams are very adhesive. So we're using that adhesive property of the foam to grab onto that metal powder and then, of course, pull that out and it will be bonded to the cast finished flexible part. And the reason we're doing that versus uh, painting on top of it, which we'll do some of that as well, is that minimizes work we have to do when we pull the prop out of the mold. So a lot of that color will be built into the final prop. Now, TC284 flexible foam is, of course, two components, a part A and a part B. And TC284 is a variable density foam. And here's what that means. So we can mix this up in a 50A to 100B ratio, and that will get us a very firm eight pound density. And that's what we'll be using today. But we could also mix this up 30 parts A to 100 parts B, and that will yield a 13 pound foam that's actually a little bit softer, but denser. Now, this is fast. Remember that uh, flexible foams and rigid foams have a fast working time. The nature of foam chemistry is they go fast. So we have a, about a 30-second work time and then right around a 30 to 45-minute demold. Now, because of that fast working time, it's imperative that we do everything we can to minimize any uh, wasted time that we might have in mixing and pouring our flexible foam. So real important, have everything ready to go, have our mold prepped and set to the side. And a quick word about temperature. Remember that flexible foams especially are very temperature sensitive. So a warm work environment is ideal for good quality self-skinning foam props. Now what I've done here is I've mixed in a little bit of the blue polypig color. And the polypig is of course compatible with all of our polyurethanes. And I cannot stress enough, it is very important to always use compatible pigments for whatever formula you're working with. And you'll notice we're adding that to the part B. And the reason for that is the part B of polyurethanes are typically the least sensitive to moisture contamination. So we're adding it to that first before we add the part A. Because again, as soon as we add that part A and stir that in, that reaction begins. So very important to get everything measured out, get our B ready to go, because because as soon as that A is added, the reaction will begin. Now, sometimes that 30 second working time can sound intimidating. So I'm gonna show that whole process of uh, adding the A and mixing and pouring, just so you can get an idea of how everything moves. So warts and all, here it is. But uh, of course, we want to get everything mixed up very accurately. But before I do that, I'm moving my mold into position. And uh, remember, it's not so much how long you mix the material as much as how thoroughly you mix it. Remember to take care to scrape the sides and the bottom of the mixing cup really well as you're mixing everything together before you pour. Now this is a 150 gram batch that I'm mixing up here. This is 100 grams of the part B that's been pigmented mixed with 50 grams of the part A. And that of course will give us that eight pound density. And what I'm doing here is since that is such a small pour spout, we're gonna pour it into the open side of one part of the mold and then put on the other side, flip that over. And because that foam is in its liquid state, by doing that little waffle move where we flip it over like a waffle iron, that gets us a nice, 
good skin quality on both sides of the mold. If you just pour it into one side and close it, sometimes you wind up with void. So I like to do that extra little flip over like a waffle machine and then let that come out through the top of the mold and restrict the foam. So you'll find that molds like this where you have a small opening will result in a much better quality skin. And of course, having a warm mold surface will, will also aid in having that nice high quality skin surface on your foam. And now ready to let that sit and cure completely. And the demold time on this formula is about 30 minutes. I usually let it sit at least 30 to 45 minutes again in a warm area to make sure that cures completely. And you can always gauge when it's ready to demold by whatever is left over in that mixing cup. Now we probably could have cut down that batch size to maybe 75 grams total, so 50 grams of B mixed with 25 grams of part A. But remember, even with a batch size of 75 grams, that would still be a very small batch. So remember that the smaller the batch size, the more accurate you want to make sure you are and the better your gram scale needs to be. Because if you get out of ratio, you will wind up with a foam that does not cure or skin properly. And now ready to remove our mold straps and check the quality of our part. Now I did this with blue poly pig color to match the original color of the pipe wrench. And I was close, but I wasn't that happy. So I went ahead and cast a second one you'll see here in a minute using some of the red poly pig color and a little bit of the red and a little bit of the brown to get more of that traditional uh, rigid brand pipe wrench color. Now here, we're just gonna carefully peel that out, and this is still setting up a little bit, but one of the reasons I went for that eight pound density with this pipe wrench is the eight pound is fairly firm, and we didn't really need an armature with this. If someone holds that in about the middle of the handle, we can get away with using that foam without any kind of armature material inside. Now we're gonna do some final touch-up work on this using the Silver B metal coating. And this is an acrylic base, but it has just enough flexibility that we can use this over flexible foams for detailing. I wouldn't recommend it if you're painting it a solid color with this, but when we're doing a, a light dry brush of that silver bee over the top, we can get away with that. And this flexes enough that it will move with that flexible foam. And unless we're handling it really rough, it'll stay put. And again, we can always go back and touch that up if necessary. But I have several prop wrenches. Those of you who have visited our showroom have probably seen some of these sitting around our shop. We love throwing them at uh, guests to our fine establishment. But uh, when you see these, you'll see they look incredibly realistic. And uh, it just takes a very little bit of detailing to finish that pipe wrench. Now we could do a lot more to it, but here you get the idea of just a combination of that pigment powder brushed into our silicone mold that then transferred to that flexible foam, and then a little bit of dry brushing over the top, and we have a nice, realistic looking uh, pipe wrench prop that then we can use to safely strike our talent. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I wasn't exactly excited about that blue color. I like that more traditional dark red color. So I mixed up another batch, again, about 150 gram batch, 100 grams of part B mixed with 50 grams of part A. And this time I mixed in some of the poly pig brown and some of the poly pig uh, red. I might've even put some poly pig black in there. And again, I'm gonna do that little waffle iron move where we close the mold, flip it over, and then strap it and turn it upright. And again, the reason for that is having that liquid foam on both sides of the mold just results in a much better skin quality on a three-dimensional part like this. Now, I mainly wanted to show some very simple techniques for pigmenting the foam and then dry brushing the resulting copy. But obviously, in a film setting with high definition film, it's a really good idea to detail the resulting foam cast to look exactly like that original pipe wrench. But uh, for bitty mold supply purposes, this will work just fine for throwing at uh, unsuspecting delivery persons or uh, customers who've happened into our store. But there you have the process of casting a TC284 flexible foam wrench.
And in a future video, I'll follow up with showing this uh, poured up with the different ratio, with that 30 to 100 ratio. So you can see the difference between those two foam formulas, the eight pound density, and of course the 13 pound density. The main reason I didn't do it here is because that does result in a softer foam. And I wanted this to be fairly firm. So again, it wouldn't wiggle around too much when it's smacking somebody on the head. Again, we're going to follow this up with a little bit of dry brushing with some of that silver bee. And now we have a nice, realistic, inexpensive foam prop. It takes a very small amount of flexible foam to get that casting. So there you have the process of casting TC284 flexible foam in the 8-pound density using a 5140 platinum silicone mold. Now, as always, all of the materials in our videos are available on our website. So you can, of course, find the TC284 and the PolyPig links and, of course, the Blue Steel Pigment Powder. All of that will be linked in the video description, so be sure to check that out. And we also have a lot more resources in the video library section of our website at brickintheyard.com. So those of you new to our channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and like the video if you are so inclined. And thanks again for watching.